Now in life, when it comes to any endeavor, talent, skill, interest, it's very important to get the basics down right. You wanna know the guidelines and parameters for you to work in to make sure you're on the right path. And that includes when it comes to your style. And with that in mind, I'm gonna help you with that in this video. On today's video, I'm gonna go into detail about 11 style basics or fashion fundamentals I believe every man should know. Now, if you're new here, welcome Jeff, your style OG. On this channel, we discuss various men's lifestyle topics such as style, grooming, and dating every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern. I invite you to subscribe, tap the notification bell, and join us. And to my returning friends like Andy Quinn, salute. First up on the list of 11 style basics every man should know is probably the most important tip. You always wanna keep in mind, fit is king. What I want you to understand that the right fit can solve almost any style problem. Fit, no doubt, is the most important aspect when it comes to style. First of all, if your clothes are too tight or too loose, it can cause discomfort and make it difficult to move around. Clothes that fit well allow for ease of movement and confidence, and the fit of your clothes can affect your body shape. If your clothes don't fit well, too tight or too loose, that can accentuate bulges or flaws. Whereas clothes that fit well accentuate your strengths and cover your flaws. Ill-fitting clothes can make you look sloppy or bigger than you actually are. Whereas a good fit can make even the simplest outfit look more stylish. It can enhance the overall look of any outfit, whether dapper, casual, or any style in between. The right fit with your clothes makes you feel more comfortable in your own skin. It also can enhance your self-esteem and your body image. Now next up is a tip I give to almost every guy especially those starting out in style. It's the first, fill your wardrobe with classic pieces, then branch out. You see, fashion trends come and go, but true style is timeless. That's why building your wardrobe around classic pieces is the most effective way to go. Style classics have timeless appeal. You know if you invest in them, they'll be in style today and 10 years from now, along with their versatility. Many classics are easy to dress up and dress down. And oftentimes, classic pieces are made from higher quality materials, meaning they'll look better and last longer. That way you save money in the long run, not having to consistently update your wardrobe with trendy pieces. And you have a lot of versatility, as you can create new looks by mixing and matching timeless pieces. You know that what you have on will look good today, tomorrow, and five to 10 years from now. Classics are a great way to have stylists filled with sophistication and refinement. Now, after you've built your wardrobe with foundational pieces, I suggest you use the swap trick to branch out. What do I mean by this? By swapping out a piece you wouldn't normally wear into your classic look, you can add a bit of interest and personality to your outfit. So how does this work? What I recommend you do, have a basic outfit you use, but maybe switch something out with a pattern or a color you don't usually wear. A great example of doing this, say you're someone who likes polo shirts. Wear a brighter color or a bolder pattern shirt. When you start with just one piece with the SWAT trick, you're not stepping too far out of your comfort zone. And to take it even a step further, if you wanna try a new trend, get one trend piece. But what I do, I buy a lower quality trend piece that's not gonna cause me too much buyer's remorse and match that up with high quality basics I already have on. This is the high-low technique. But when you're swapping out, I want you to keep in mind the statement piece rule. One statement piece at a time. When you have a bold color pattern, keep the rest of your outfit simple. Now next up is a fashion fundamental that will always be in style. I highly recommend you invest in the highest quality shoes you can reasonably afford. Shoes are an essential part of any man's wardrobe. Not only do they protect your feet, but they can add a level of sophistication to any look. That's why it's highly important you focus on quality shoes. High quality shoes will be more durable and more comfortable. High quality shoes are made of quality leather, suede, and other materials, which mold to your feet over time, making them fit you even better, adding more comfort. And these high quality materials will assure that your shoes will last for years to come. Whereas cheap shoes are usually made with synthetic materials that not only won't last as long, they're not as breathable. Not to mention cheap shoes fall apart quickly, meaning you'll have to invest more over the long run if you don't buy high quality shoes. High quality shoes are timeless in style and design, enabling them to be very versatile, meaning you can wear them with many looks for many years to come. Now next up, I wanna take a little time to talk about today's video sponsor, Manscaped, and the newest grooming product, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Now when it comes to grooming, one of the small details a lot of guys overlook 
that unruly nose and ear hair. The premium weed whacker from Manscaped uses a powerful 7,000 RPM motor with an improved steel blade system and upgraded cutting performance from the Weed Whacker 1.0. It comes with Manscaped Skin Safe technology, which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs. Cordless is rechargeable, and its battery lasts for up to 45 minutes. And not only can you buy the Weed Whacker on its own, when you buy Manscaped's Platinum Package or Performance Package 4.0, the Weed Whacker is included. Weed Whacker 2.0 is my go-to ear and nose hair trimmer. Now, not only did Manscaped sponsor today's video, they've got a special offer for the Style OG family. When you go to manscaped.com style and use my discount code STYLEOG, you'll get 20% off your order and free shipping. It's time to level up your grooming game. So make sure you hit that link in the description and grab yourself the Manscaped Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. You also need to be informed on how long your pants should be by knowing what different pants brakes are and how they can work for you. What is your pants brake? The pants brake is the crease that is caused when the bottom of your pants meets the top of your shoe. Let's go over a few of the different pants brakes and who they work best for. First up, we have no brake, which is just as it sounds. There's no visible brake in the pants fabric as it hits right at the top of your shoe. No brake usually works well for tall or slimmer guys. Next up, we have a quarter brake. A quarter break refers to a small crease in the fabric about a quarter of the length down your pants leg. This is a great middle ground break that works for a wide variety of guys. Next up, we have the half break, where you have the crease about halfway down the pant leg. This break is very common and works for the widest range of guys. Next up, we have a full break, where there's a large creasing at the bottom of your pant leg. This break will cover most of your shoe. Next up, we have a slight break where there's a very subtle crease in the pant leg. Making it barely cover the top of the shoe, this is a more fashion forward style of break. Next, I think it's very important for you to know the difference between a t-shirt and an undershirt. Although they may appear very similar, there's a few key differences. First off, let's talk about the purpose. The purpose of a t-shirt is meant to be a standalone garment and outer layer whereas an undershirt is meant to be worn under your clothing to block sweat and odor. Now let's talk about the fabric differences. A t-shirt is usually made of a thicker material, more durable fabrics such as cotton or polyester, whereas an undershirt is usually made with thinner, lighter, and more breathable fabric. T-shirts are also made to have a more relaxed fit, whereas an undershirt fits a little more snugly. When it comes to the neckline, a t-shirt is usually gonna be a V-neck or a crew neck, whereas an undershirt will usually have a deeper V-neck, making it easier to conceal an undershirt under outside layers. Now let's talk about another distinction. Let's distinguish it between the suit jacket, the blazer, and the sport coat. Although these jackets may seem similar, each one has its own unique characteristics and history. First off, let's talk about the suit jacket. The suit jacket is the most formal of all three jackets and is meant to be worn with its matching trousers. And the jacket and trousers are made of the same fabric and your suit jacket usually will have the closest fit, structured shoulders, and will be tapered at the waist. Next up, we have the blazer, which is a formal jacket, but less formal than the suit jacket. And although it is less formal, it's still suitable for most dressy occasions. It's usually made from a solid colored fabric, either navy, gray, or black, but it's more relaxed than the suit jacket, not as structured, and doesn't fit as close to the body. Lastly, we have the sports jacket, which is the most casual of all three jackets. It was originally designed for outside activities, thus it's usually made with heavier fabrics, your tweeds, your herring bones, your corduroy. Not only is a sports jacket made with heavier fabrics, it will often have a pattern or texture. We're not quite done comparing and contrasting yet. Let's talk about the difference between a button-up and a button-down shirt. These two type of dress shirts, although they seem similar, do have some key differences. A button-up shirt is a shirt that features buttons from the collar all the way down to the hem of the shirt. A button-up shirt is typically worn for dressier occasions. It's made of a finer material, and one of the key distinguishing factors, a button-up shirt does not have buttons on the collar. Whereas a button-down shirt has buttons all the way up the front of the shirt, but it also has buttons on the collar itself. The buttons on the collar allow you to fasten the collar to the shirt. The button-down shirt also is a more casual choice. Now, next up is a great way to develop your own personal style. You can do that by finding a style avatar. What do I mean by that? Often when people first start out with style, they don't know what direction to go into. 
When you pick a style avatar, somebody that you think dresses well, this can be a great person to emulate. A style avatar can provide much needed inspiration. It can be challenging for a lot of guys to find a style that truly reflects their personality. But when you have a style avatar, it gives you a sense of what can work. And the great thing about a lot of style icons, they have a timeless style. You know it's been working for them for years, it may also work for you. But having a style avatar also can give you a boost of confidence, allowing you to branch out and try new things you might not have thought of if you didn't see the guy who dresses well wearing it first. It will also reinforce that you should invest in quantity over quality, which most timeless stylist icons often do. Now next up, let's talk about a foundational style basic that's often overlooked. You want to make sure you match your belt to your shoes. Yes, the color of your shoes and your belt should match. Black shoes, black belt. Brown shoes, brown belt. And the dressier or more formal the occasion, the more closely your belt and shoes should match. When your outfit is a little more casual, you can have a little bit more leniency. You don't have to wear the same color, maybe just the same color family. And a benefit of wearing a matching belt and shoe combo it can actually make you appear taller and slimmer. It draws the eye up and down, creating a sleek silhouette. Next up, let's talk about how to match your socks to your outfit. Now this can seem like a small thing, but it's a small detail that can make a big difference. And the right socks can tie your whole outfit together. The first rule you wanna follow, the best thing to do, match your socks to the color of your pants. When you do this, it creates a cohesive look and can elongate the legs. Or you can opt to match the color of your socks to your shoes. This also creates a cohesive look. Or if you wanna branch out a little bit and wear a patterned sock, pick a color in the pattern that matches the color of your pants. When it comes to choosing the right socks, you also want to make sure they're right for the occasion. The dressier the outfit, the more match your socks should be to your pants. For more casual situations, you can be more experimental.